All right, in this video, I'm gonna walk through my stock photography revenue from March. I'm also gonna answer a question that a number of people have asked me, and that's how I think stock photography sales are gonna be affected by COVID-19. But before I do, I really hope that you're staying safe and sane through all this. I'm lucky in that I live in an area that doesn't have a lot of cases so far, and I already worked from home, so it hasn't been that much of a switch for me. Um, so I'm just able to keep working on Photoloo, my own photography, as well as this channel. So I'm gonna start off with the money that I made selling my photos in March. And the number one site for me in March was Fine Art America. Somebody in Denver, Colorado bought a 40 by 26 print of one of my most popular photos of Moraine Lake. Now I haven't talked too much about Fine Art America on this channel because I don't make a lot of sales up there. Maybe one every couple of months. Um, but I do have a number of photos up there. I used to upload there regularly. And what Fine Art America is, is it's a site that sells prints of your photos. So you can upload your photos there. People can go and purchase them and Fine Art America handles everything. They basically handle collecting the payment as well as printing off your photos and sending them to the end customer. And then they just give you a cut of the revenue. Now you get to set what your markup is for Fine Art America. So I've set mine up. So if it's like a smaller print, like an eight by 10, I've got a $20 markup. And if it's a larger print, I go all the way up to a $70 markup. So for somebody who purchases a 40 inch print, there's a $50 markup. And then I also get a little commission on the framing that Fine Art America sold them. So that's what brought it up to $53. Now the next site on my list is a huge surprise and it's Pixabay. I don't think I've ever made more than like $10 on Pixabay in a month. So seeing it up closer to $40 is a huge surprise. Now, if you're not familiar with what Pixabay is, it's very similar to Pexels in that you can upload your photos and anybody can use them for free. But when they download them, they're encouraged to give you a donation. Now I uploaded about 80 photos to Pixabay um, over a year ago, and I have found that I haven't got as many donations through Pixabay as I have through Pexels. So I've kind of been focusing more on Pexels, but you know, this month somebody decided to donate uh, $40. So Pixabay was actually higher than Pexels was. Now the next two sites are my typical top sites, Adobe Stock and Shutterstock. And they're definitely a bit lower than I typically see, but not out of the ordinary low. You know, I've had lower months than this in the past year. So this could be because of the coronavirus, but it could be just because it was a bad month for me on my stock sales. Now the next on the list is deposit photos. Now I was really surprised when I did my 2019 year review that deposit photos went up by $100 from 2008 to 2019. Now the reason this is surprising is I haven't uploaded a new photo to deposit photos since 2014. So the only way that I can see it going up is if deposit photos is getting more popular and my photos are getting in front of more buyers on that site. Now, since I haven't uploaded any photos since 2014, I've got a lot of stock photos and videos on Adobe Stock and Shutterstock that I don't have on deposit photos. So this past weekend, I went and I uploaded a, an additional 125 photos and videos to my deposit photos account. Now, they're still waiting to be reviewed, but I'm really looking forward to see if that can bump up my you know, monthly deposit photos earnings to be closer to where Shutterstock and Adobe Stock are. Now, next on the list is Pexels. Now, $10 from Pexels isn't really that unordinary, but this was set up as a recurring donation. So I didn't even know this was possible, so I went and take a look. But when someone clicks on the donate button in Pexels um, and they get the donation screen from PayPal, there's a checkbox to make it a monthly recurring donation. And someone did that um, when they gave me one of their donations in March. So assuming the person doesn't cancel this donation, that means Pexels is gonna send me at least $10 every month going forward. And you know, this first recurring donation is a surprise and it's very appreciated. But imagine if more people started doing this. You know, if one person set up a recurring donation every month, then Pexels would soon become my top revenue site for my photos. All right, now while we're on the topic of Pexels, I wanna spend a couple minutes talking about Pexels and my journey on that site. Because I've been seeing more and more comments of people you know, trying out Pexels and then abandoning it after not getting any donations right away. So I first started by uploading a couple dozen photos to Pexels back in May of 2017. And I didn't get any donations really for the first year. 
But I started to notice more and more donations coming in in around August of 2018. And it really encouraged me to go in and start uploading more photos. So at that point, I had about 10 million views on my account, but then I went in and uploaded another 100 photos. So it was after I uploaded those 100 photos that, you know, my views and my downloads on Pexels really started to take off, as you can see by this chart. Now, where I stand today is I actually just got into the top 100. I'm number 99 in all time views on the site. And I've got about 138 million views and over a million downloads on Pexels. So when I tell you about my Pexels revenue, that's revenue that came to me after three years of uploading to the site and becoming fairly popular. So you can't really expect to upload a couple of dozen photos, you know, and after a thousand downloads, starting to get regular donations. At least that's not the way that it worked for me. If it does for you, that's amazing. I love to hear about it. But realistically, you may need to spend more time on the site before you start to receive donations more regularly. Now, the rest of my sites were pretty typical, and if you tally it all up, I made about $200 from my photography in March. Now, the really big question, would I have made more from my stock sales in March if we weren't in the middle of a global pandemic? Well, my sales did seem to be on the low side, but I wouldn't say that that was 100% related to the pandemic. You know, the question really is, is what is going to happen going forward in April, May, and beyond? So going forward, I think my stock revenue is going to take a hit from the coronavirus. But I don't know if the industry as a whole is going to take that big of a hit. Just as an example, let's say you had a portfolio with a lot of photos of somebody wearing, you know, a face mask in different situations. Well, if you had a portfolio of that, you know, going into March, you probably would have killed it in March, right? Because you've already had, you know, all those different types of photos. But for me, a lot of my photos are travel and landscape photography. And a lot of the people that buy my photography are travel companies and the travel industry is really hurting right now. And they're going to continue hurt, hurting throughout this thing until all the lockdowns open up. And even after that, traveling will probably be slow. So I expect that I will not be making as much sales as my photos. But I do think that it really depends on whether you'll make more or less depending on the type of photography you do. You know, there's a lot of different industries out there that, you know, are very busy because of the pandemic, whereas, you know, a lot of other industries are not as busy. Now, overall, if you look at the global economy, you know, I think, you know, so many of us staying from home, so many people not being able to work is going to, you know, make things go down. So I think it, it is inevitable that the stock photography industry follows that trend and it will go down slightly, but I think it'll depend more on the types of photos you have as opposed to, you know, the industry as a whole. Anyways, we'll see what happens over the next couple of months. Make sure you subscribe to the channel so you can see my revenue reports in April and beyond. So you got to see how things are trending, whether my predictions were correct, as well as make sure you give this video a like if you found it useful and stay safe out there and best of luck selling your photos online.